All right, Esper Humans. Esper, for those not familiar, refers to this three-color combination you have here in front of us of white, black, and uh, blue. This is a base black-white deck down here on the lower end of our curve with some Hostage Taker at the top end and some Meddling Mages in the sideboard for additional disruption. Um, we've also got a small kind of aristocrat slash sacrificial sub theme with uh, priest of the forgotten gobs. So, um, we have both hunted witness and garrison cat here as things that make extra tokens when they die. So those work well with the priest. We've got giant killer and dire tactics as additional, additional interaction here for creatures. We've got kite sail freebooter and meddling mage to swap in when creature removal is not good. So, Let's go ahead and pop on into some matches here with this and see how it goes. Yeah, I needed I needed to give people a break from reality because reality's been a little bit bit bleak lately. So I decided to work outside the box there and have the card art that got the most votes actually win the win the voting. Feel feel like we could all use a break from reality, so. Yeah, it's probably fine. Got two drop, one drop into two drop. Jeff, that was too real. It hurts. Sorry. Apologies. Block. One of, one of the reasons why, one of the reasons why I'm not super optimistic, I'm actually going to lead on Priest now, why I really don't want to dip back into Standard even with the bands, is the Companion nerf hurts aggressive Companions more than anything else, which means that all of the aggro decks in Standard are likely to go back to just being Ember Cleave decks. Huh? Do I just dire tactics this chain whirler? What if I just go like dire tactics the chain whirler, play a tap land, attack for one? I kind of like it. I could like go this, this, make them sack, but then the chain whirler lives. Right. Well, glass half full. They didn't find a shock there. What's this strange game and where is Fizz? Oh, Fizz. Was that a good draw chat? <laughs> that tactics is so sweet. I would jump block, but they probably have Ember Cleave.
Can we draw a hostage taker so we can steal this Ember Cleave? I think I'm picking Thalia here, even though it might be nice to protect the priest because if they chain whirler me, I want to be able to save Thalia. Okay, Disfigure sounds good. Hostage Taker sounds good. I think I'm actually supposed to trim Thalius here because of Goblin Chain Whirler. Chain, Chain Whirler is just pretty good against our deck in general. I have a lot of X1s. Mage for Embercleave. Maybe I just bring in Mage because it's not an X1. I don't hate that. Yeah, usually there'll be dual lands of some sort in the core set. No one drop here is a little bit sad, but the rest of the hand's great. If we draw one of our one drops on one, it'll be reasonable. At the very least, we get to play a tap land tier on one, which is fine. Did M20 have duels? Didn't M20 have temples in it? Or am I misremembering? M20 had temples. Okay. I would love if the corset gave us the rest of the cycle lands. I think that would be great. Out. please. I agree. I think dies to Doomblade is a reasonable critique of Masticor because you get two for one if it dies to Doomblade. Attack doesn't make any sense. They have a protection from white. Am I supposed to attack with Hostage Taker? I have this to block here. I want to put the general in front of something where if they cleave it, it lives. Yeah, Grim Tutor or something. If they cleave their Fervent Champion, they kill my Hostage Shaker, but then all of their creatures die. So that's probably not a very good play. These blocks kill Taker in general, though, to draft. Disagree. Oh, they were setting up for Goblin Chain Whirler. That makes sense. Oh. No, Grim Tutor was a $200 card. Whew! 
That's a... That's a good one, yeah? Hi, Felicia. Yeah, the original printings won't become the same price as the new ones, but they will drop a bit. There's still some collectible value in having original printings, for sure. Like, turning, turning from a $200 card to a $100 card is probably pretty reasonable. Sure. There's only legal in vintage. No, it was legal in legacy. And only not only was it legal in legacy, but it's also an EDH card, I'd imagine. If we'd venture to guess. I think I lead on value here and then just plan to plan to general next turn. This this set of games really highlighting nicely why talking about things being represented from the sample sizes that we're playing on the ladder here are very silly. Like we didn't play against any mono red while playing the deck before this, and now we've queued into mono red twice in a row to start this set. Even when we play a deck for an hour and a half or two hours, the sample size with that deck is incredibly small overall and should be taken with a grain of salt. Should not should not try to say anything statistically significant about a small set of games that we play. Just look at Bird, Alpha, and Seventh Edition. What are what what is the price difference there for, for just offhand Lizzie? Jay Critch, thanks for the quarter of year. I really appreciate you sending your prime this way again. Welcome back. Thanks for, thanks for keeping me around. Can we race here is a good question. How good are their leftovers? 2k plus for Alpha Birds. 400 for 7th edition. Alpha Birds is over 2 grand, sure. Seventh edition foils are $700. I was actually looking at 8th edition foil birds today when we started the stream. Because Birds is one of my favorite cards. And then rather than be mana efficient here, I think I'm actually just going to Dauntless Bodyguard. So that way I can uh, protect my Priest of the Forgotten Gods here. Yeah, Birds of Paradise. A recommended link for looking at spoilers. I use the website Mythic Spoiler usually. Was really hoping to draw just any creature there. I'm sacrificing the general. Scryfall, Scryfall is a great site, but they tend to update their spoiler stuff slower than Mythic Spoiler does in my experience. So like when the full spoiler's up, I use Scryfall because their technology's better, but their rate at which they upload stuff tends to be slower. Or 
Perfect. Deal, deal, Arena. Yeah, yeah, uh, what's it called? Doesn't usually post, uh, doesn't post leaks. Scryfall does it. I'm a big, I'm a big believer in that you can't take the pee out of the pool. So, like, pretending leaks don't exist I think is very silly. I think we've died, chat. Give me some more spells here. On the board, just like we did in the last one. We're going to cut these Thalias and some bodyguards and bring in disfigures and meddling mages and a hostage taker. Good. How's it feel coming back to Magic after playing Legends of Terror for a bit? Fine. Variety, like I've like I've often said, variety is the spice of life, right? And one of one of the reasons why Terra can't take over completely for someone that's completely engrossed in magic like myself is, you know, there's just not like even though Terra is very well done and the client is slick, the depth of their card pool and range of the formats that they have just isn't there yet. And, like, someday it might get there with time, but it won't be there in the short term. Sounds, sounds good, Eli. We'll get bumped up. Will I be streaming Rune Terra in the future? 100%. I've enjoyed it a lot. As far as viewer numbers go for non-magic games, I've I had a pretty pretty steady viewer count all week doing a bunch of Rune Terra stuff. I'm not making any official schedule or plans just yet because you know we're expecting Haley sometime soon. We're just naming Goblin Chain Whirler, right? Protect this with bodyguard. I mentioned I mentioned before on stream I've wanted to try and diversify a bit before in the past too, so seems like a good opportunity to try and do that. You said how you're spelling Haley. No, Christy asked me not to share that since I already messed up and shared the name in general. Thanks for those some gift wise sticks. Yeah, we'll see. I'm up to I'm optimistic for for Rune Terra's future too. Like if they if they hit their goals and they like release cards every two months, it probably won't be long before they have a pretty deep card pool. I bet we're gonna see them block here and then shoot Dauntless Bodyguard. Oh, they're just trading. Really? Okay, deal. When are we playing Artifact 2? <laughs> I mean, to set an incredibly low bar, I'll bet Artifact 2 will be better than Artifact 1. Nah, I'm not a huge fan of APM based games anymore. I'm an old man. It's a good pickup. Oh yeah, Tithe Taker stopped them from shooting something. That's great. I forgot about that too. No way they are making Artifact 2. They are confirmed to be making Artifact 2, and it's already in closed beta at the moment. What's up, youngest son? You want to play Minecraft? Why not? Why can't you? It's not turning on. It's not turning on. Well, the switch is on. Will the TV not 
Oh, you didn't change the input? I'll do it for you. I love you. I apologize, Chad, it was a Minecraft emergency. Okay, so they very clearly have a, uh, they very clearly have an ember cleave, right? Okay, you have to wait till my game finishes if you need more help. I changed your input. Uh, meddling Mage is naming, um, is naming, what's it called? Goblin Jingler at the moment. So, really hoping to draw a land here so we can Hostage Shaker their Ember Cleave next turn. Going down to 10 here. This is only eight. Yeah, we're just like not realistically racing. I guess, I guess I'm leaving Meddling Mage back, and I'm, like, blocking plus sacrificing the Dauntless Bodyguard. And then next turn, the General can sacrifice some humans to kill this if we draw one mana human. Or if we have another shot at a land to hostage shake or their thing. So again, the way indestructible and double strike works here, my opponent has to only assign three damage to my meddling mage here. That works different than protection. If this meddling mage had been protection from red, they would have had to assign three to the mage twice. Because it's indestructible, they only have to assign three one time. Feels magic the gathering, man. Um I don't necessarily want to change anything for that matchup after those games. If we'd have hit, uh, if we'd have hit the land there for, for the hostage taker in those two turns, we probably would have had a real reasonable shot. Oh, I need to go check on Minecraft. Be right back. Impatience drives innovation, chat. The five-year-old figured it out himself. General had an ability we can use. Can he sacrifice himself? I also don't think we could just, like, win anymore at that point.
Sacrifice two humans. Okay, yeah, so he could have sacrificed himself there, sure. I just assumed he was other human. Obviously, incorrectly. I think we're probably still dead there, but here are correct that I didn't, uh, wasn't dead on board. Does the Jeskai tempo list struggle against aggro, or are you missing something? I mean, you have to mulligan appropriately against aggro with that deck. Containment Priest coming to Historic. White got a huge boost against Winota and Field of the Dead. I'd encourage you to read Containment Priest if you think it is a boost against Field of the Dead. I'm going to give you the best piece of advice you're ever going to hear about Magic the Gathering chat. Reading is busted. Boo, boo reading boo. massacre worm will be very good against field of the dead that is accurate i didn't want to just activate priest because siren storm tamer can actually counter priest of the forgotten god's ability which sucks They have a tricky dick here. They do. I think I'm fine with this trade. Are you ready for three months of Nissa into Ugin? I'm not actually. That's why I'm just not going to play standard. Unless, unless the PT coming up this weekend has some kind of absurd, unpredictable, crazy diversity. I do not, do not intend to, uh... Have spent much time playing standard. This is gonna be this is gonna be a historic and rune terror stream. There's a PT this weekend, uh, a week from tomorrow, right? A week from tomorrow is the first digital PT. And not and not even just deck deck type diversity too, but like if there's just a bunch of like different Ember Cleave decks, like. I don't, I don't really want to just get, like, Ember Cleaved in four different ways, either. That doesn't sound particularly enjoyable. Getting, getting Priest of the Forgotten Gods down against these Counterspell decks is so good. I want to use melee so we can get meaningful sets. Okay, and then this is peak Wizards of the Coast for people not familiar. I actually don't believe Wizards of the Coast has announced how their tournament's going to work. Like, I'm, I'm pretty sure they haven't announced how players are going to get pairings among, among lots of other details. So, should be, should be fun. Should be, should be fun. Yeah, there's a Lat Am event. Um, MTG Melee is also running a charity event, I believe, as well. That might have some number of people. Just neat, neat to see. Yeah, yeah, the Magic Arena. The overlay on the screen is one of the many things that Magic Arena allows that Magic Online never did. I think I'm just going to end the turn here. Hold up Dire Tactics. And speaking speaking of no announcements, um, is there coverage of the Pro Tour next weekend? 
Or are we just, like, on a fully release-ready product that, like, doesn't support coverage, so it's just, like, not happening for their big tournament? Is that, is that the reality we're living in? Calling judges will have to be louder because we're going to be six feet apart. All right, disfigure sounds great. Kite sail freebooter sounds reasonable. Normally you want as much removal as possible in this matchup, but I actually think hostage taker and giant killer, like this doesn't hit much and hostage taker is just so expensive. Disfigure and dire tactics and priest sounds like enough. Metrum in general, like bringing, bringing my curve down in this matchup sounds appealing. What if I cut a land actually? Yeah, it's like cut a watery grave. Or a plains. I'm gonna cut a land. We're on the draw. We're on the draw and we cut our four drops. Cutting a land seems reasonable. No coverage. The Lotus Box guys will be commenting on San Seed though. Okay. Ready to flood and die? Something like that. <sighs> this is a low end of keepable. Not having a one drop feels bad in this matchup, especially on the draw, but Tithe Taker's pretty good. We have a removal spell, so I think we're keeping this. So, I don't think I cut Watery Grave. Maybe I cut Hollowed Fountain. I cut my blue spell, so I should cut Hollowed Fountain. I definitely don't want to cut a Black Source because, um... I don't want to cut a Black Source because I'm boarding in extra Black cards. I'm boarding in Kite Sail, Freebooter, and Disfigure. But I think, I think, uh, boarding out a Hollowed Fountain was better than Planes, though. Because I did cut my blue card. So planes is planes is just better. Storm Tamer here. Ooh, I was going to say Storm Tamer is unfortunately going to prevent us from killing this, but no longer the case. Yeah, Godzilla basics are not real sweet. So I'm putting a stop on their upkeep. And the reason for sequencing this way is this way, if this is a counter spell... I get to play around it. Or if this is a counter spell, they have to use their mana to cast it on their turn, so they lose mana for a turn cycle here. So doing this on my turn means if this is a counter spell, they would counter my spell and then untap and have all three mana again. Whereas this way, if they were fortunate enough to draw a counter, we're going to choke their mana with it a little bit for a turn. And picking the fight on their turn means the cutthroat doesn't get a counter if this is a counter spell. So a couple, couple of reasons there, both how we tie up their mana as well as how their cutthroat interacts with to wait for their upkeep here. So obviously it feels bad if we get like spell pierced here, but this could also be a hard counter. Also, if we wait on the dire tactics, we give them more chances to draw counter spells. So I want to just like kind of make them have it while seeing the least amount of cards. We'll lead on Talia here. So that's if they have a three mana counter, they have to use it on her because they won't be able to use it on this with Talia's effect in play. 
We're going to make sure we target their instants and sorceries here because some of these blue decks play Terramander. Not super common anymore in the PDP for card pull, but occasionally they do. I think Spell Snare would be too obnoxious for Historic. Nah, probably not. They're printing Mastercore so they can unban Oka. Oh, should have tagged an instant or sorcery there for the reason I talked about earlier. Sure. Whatever. Great. Dead on board. Go ahead. That's true. That card could be a reason to unman, okay? Have you seen the leaked Tefri? You mean the Tefri they spoiled today on stream? Or a different Tefri? Don't be a dive down. Don't be a dive down. God bless. Magic State's going well. We played a Grixis Dredge deck to start. That was a lot of fun. Humans has been super reasonable so far. A good deck. Feels, feels good to be able to play relevant current formats of Magic on Magic Arena. Dear, dear Wizards of the Coast, never take uh, an almost two-week break from having relevant formats again. Thanks. PCV, thanks for the 18 months. Yeah, we're gonna... We're really gonna put fire to steel, for lack of a better term, and uh, find out what dropping distancing rules turns out. There was a there was a peaceful assembly in Bloomington near where I live, and the lack of people there wearing masks while also not social distancing was uh, pretty frustrating as someone who's capable of... of uh, Understanding science. When can you at least pick like one or the other? Is Obash payoff and mono red still better than cleave? Probably not. My body is ready to get chain whirler. Sick. Well, this really works out. That's good to hear, Hamblin. Thanks for the 31 months, Bionic. I really appreciate the generous tier two. Thanks for keeping me around. National Guard wasn't wearing masks at checkpoints in Chicago, and neither were the police. Yep. 
going to be interesting to see what hospital capacities look like in two weeks. Hopefully the scientists are wrong. Ah, they're not usually wrong, chat. So, just just something to point out so people understand the information. Because again, people stats don't lie, but people lie with stats all of the time. Anyone saying... COVID is spiking already because of the protests, doesn't understand the science. Will there be spikes from the protest? Almost assuredly, yes. Are whatever spikes you're seeing right now a result of the protest? No, very likely not. This COVID-19 has up to a 14-day incubation period. So somewhere in the 7 to 14 days after these protests happen, is when the spikes from these, the spikes that you are seeing right now are very likely a result of Memorial Day and states in general laxing their social distancing and lockdown guidelines. So again, just to not put, make sure people don't put words out, that's not me saying the protests likely won't result in spikes. It's me saying the spikes we're currently seeing are not a result of the protests most likely. That's, that's an important distinction. What am I doing here? We're definitely hostage taking. The question is what? Do we want to take the whirly boy or do we want to take the annex? Hostage shaker is going to have four toughness. So pretty unlikely it dies. I think I think it's Chain Whirler. If I take Chain Whirler, I get to attack with Thalia with impunity. Yeah, it shrinks us back down to a 4-3 or 3-3. Three, three. And then I can attack with these two. Because if I take this, Tithe Taker can't attack and Thalia would trade. I think I think this is the line. Yeah, Chain Whirler is also a much better blocker on our side of the board, which is great. And so they conceded there, obviously, so we're done. But an interesting question there is, is it correct for me to... Is it correct for me to play the Chain Whirler? Or am I supposed to play another General? Now, something I did, I did in the last couple times we played this matchup, I was boarding in Meddling Mage. Is it actually better to board in Kite Sail Freebooter, though? Being able to snag Ember Cleave out of their hand sounds, sounds profitable. Would I, would I rather have Kite Sail or Meddling Mage? Thinking about it, I think Kite Sail might actually be better. How's Grixis? The Grixis dredge deck was actually really sweet. Both the both the decks we played today so far have been good. <sighs> this hand's like super good, except all of the lands hurt me, which is not super good in this matchup. And I think because they actually didn't have a one drop, I think I'm actually just gonna play a turn behind here and not take damage from my lands. Oh, 
vomit. That's super unfortunate. Oh, maybe I should jump block here, because this would be a this would be a two-two token. Yeah, I think I'm supposed to jump block there actually. Hey, spicy, spicy. Welcome back. Robber the Rich is anti-thematic because it's better when you're ahead. It's a good observation. Separately, definitely how the card plays, huh? We hold dire tactics at instant speed here. Maybe get them to make an attack that's not stellar. I think we've died, Jet. Obviously, obviously got punished for not dire tacticsing. For not dire tacticsing right away. Main deck dire tactics worth it. Well, I'm going to answer your question with a... I'm going to answer your question with a question. Am I playing main deck dire tactics? Yes or no? According to the on-screen deck list, yes. So the answer to your question, do I think main deck dire tactics is worth it, is yes. That's why I'm playing it. Yes, the red green companion is a free roll in my Esper deck. Come on, Twitch chat. Come on, Twitch chat. What are you doing to me? <laughs> mm. 
You took some time off of magic and people don't understand how anything works anymore. Yet, that statement implies that people knew how it worked before. Howdy, Ezio. I mean, I didn't intend to take a, a four, five day break for magic. Wizards of the Coast decided that nobody should be allowed to play relevant magic formats for five days online. That's not my fault. Wizards did it. Eh, this is like low end to keepable. I'm going to give you a 10 minute timeout, Mitsu, to go read all of the cards that you asked me why I didn't use them in the way you suggested. Would you like to shock my kite sail freebooter? Kudra deck looks sweet. Yeah, I think it's super reasonable. They brought in Goblin Rune Blaster against me. Really? Well, now, now I'm suddenly glad to have a hand that's very full. Yeah, I feel, I feel like that's the wrong axis to be fighting in this matchup, but you know. As you, as you will. Get that one out of there before they can kill my priest in response. Stone rain me, daddy. That's super unfortunate because now. Okay, this is actually kind of funny. So I'm gonna play this and I'm gonna name Giant. Now they're gonna lightning strike this and I'll stomp them in response. So the way hostage taker works with these cards is you can play either half for colorless mana, but then once it goes on an adventure, you have to be able to make the right color to cast it while it's on an adventure. So by naming giant, we get to stomp and then cast it that way, which is nice. Torbrand is super scary. Probably dead here when they hit the land this turn. Not, I'm not dead yet. And people said we couldn't cast Jag. They bricked on uh they bricked on the fourth land long enough here that we might be okay. We'll see. It's a pretty good one. Ooh, that's a good one too though.
Do I sack Freebooter and Hunted Witness to kill Annex? I think I think I think it's probably block with the cat. And then we can sack the human token from the cat and the hunted witness. If you get if you get timed out for saying for saying kill Torbrand, I'd encourage you to read my magic cards. Love you, chat. Kind of like sacking witness and cat. God, good lord. I'm just, it's just mercilessly fragging. There's no, there's no mercy here, chat. For the love, for the love of God. If you are on mobile, there is a plugin under your window. Click it. It lets you see all of the cards in my deck and read their text. <laughs> please, please. Oh no. Oh no! Oh no! <sighs> the top of their deck was very good. Not a whole lot. Not a whole lot we could do there. We had seven lands to their four. Whirly boys, whirly boys, and Torbrand's gonna give us a bad time, chip. You can plague, plague, when do you go? Plague, plague, when do you plus lightning bolt you? Why didn't you just kill the tri- It's because I'm not a good streamer. Listen, if you want to see top of the ladder mythic gameplay, I'd recommend going and watching Crokies. He should still be live. We're very, we're very clearly in platinum here, chat. I'm not, I'm not trying to oversell, oversell my capabilities here. One thing that really makes me sad about the companion nerf that I really enjoyed and that I actually really like about Runeterra, and we've talked about this in games like Hex and Hearthstone too, the fact that you get to make educated mulliganing decisions game one is so awesome in all those other card games. The fact that like I have to make a decision in the dark here about whether or not I'd rather keep Tithe Taker or keep my removal spell just feels really bad. Really, really, really liked that companions like gave you that extra information to be like, okay, they have this companion, they're likely this deck, I want to mulligan in this way in game one. It really adds an extra skill component to the game. You don't see companions and so no, they they nerfed companions, Jin. So companions are worse, so people are just playing less of them. They they effectively soft ban them in a lot of instances. Yeah, you still see them at the beginning of the game, but like it's not as relevant because people are playing less of them. Like it's not, it's not really useful if people aren't playing them. So mechanically, as far as the rules go, you still reveal them. It's just, it's not relevant that people reveal them because they're just not playing them. Feels, feels dead here. Bring in Disfiguring Grasp here. Maybe I want Agonizing Remorse. Try that.
The way they nerf companions, lack of compensation feels cheap. They don't work in the way that people crafted for them. Even at a half rate would have been reasonable because they were playable. Yeah, I agree, Kodama. I mean, Wizards of the Coast is like not a particularly generous company, right? Like to set a low bar, the arena economy is like marginally more generous than Hearthstone, but like that's a pretty incredibly low bar. Hearthstone's super expensive. I'm just killing their elf here since you're another one. Just try and slow them down. That's true. Of all the ways to play Magic, Arena has the best economy of them. So if you're looking to play Magic, Arena definitely has the most nice economy of all of them. 778,000 shillings. This last 25% is going to feel like forever. Beverly Shields. That's where you want to be. Just shilling, just shilling, shilling in Beverly Hills. Pure Punker, thanks for 13 months. Welcome back. Hey, I'm glad you're enjoying it, Hugeum. And if you missed any of my Rune Terra content, just like if you missed any of my magic content, it's all up on my YouTube channel, Cut Up by Deck. There's also a page on my website for Rune Terra, just like there's a page for um, standard, historic, favorite decks, etc. Some of you will have to die, but that's a price I'm willing to pay. Please enjoy three of Jeff Bezos' dollars towards Jeff H's paternity leave. Thank you, Repetition. I appreciate the uh, quarter of a year. Welcome back. Draw. This is unfortunately not a human, despite what the artwork looks like. Some, I thought you were quoting our president for a second. I mean, our president is essentially a cartoon villain, so... We've got them low, but if they have a Nissa here, it's going to be hard to overcome. It's pretty good, too. Wow, Jeff, so you don't kill toy brands, but you figured out how to kill questing bees. You should probably figure out how your cards work. I agree. I'm gonna need that. I'm gonna need to work on that. <sighs> Alright. We're gonna be. We're gonna be done with this one, I think. Um, I think the takeaway on this is the takeaway when I've played this card before. Um, this card's just not good. It's not good enough in this format. It's like barely good enough in modern and you like play it because you're in blue anyways, but neither Meddling Mage nor Hostage Shaker are good enough to be playing blue in this deck. Um, I think you'd much rather you'd much rather just be in red. We've played Mardu before, and I think Judith inside of a human shell is very reasonable, especially when you mix in a little Priest of the Forgotten Gods like we did here. Um, so yeah, something, something like that. That's, uh, well, that's, that's a statement, Jim. All right, what are we what are we doing next? We are going to roll on into some soul siblings up next here. Feature a couple main deck copies of Lurus. I'm going to go ahead and hit a quick ad roll, and when we get back, we'll uh, be battling some of this. Thanks for hanging out today, folks. Don't go anywhere.